Do you set yourself up to fail? Do you kill your chance at realism before you even start coloring? Today, we're talking about breaking down the walls to realism. I've met a lot of amazingly talented students in my coloring classes. People who could have gone to art school. People who should have gone to art school. And colorers who don't just color, they make beautiful art. If you're watching this video, you're probably a colorer who wants to do more, create more, and move beyond just filling in the lines with pretty markers or pencils. But there's one thing that's almost universal in the coloring community, and it's something that's holding you back from getting the depth, dimension, and ultimately the realism that you want for your projects. It's boundary lines, outlines. Outlines kill realism. Now before we get too deep into this conversation, I want to stipulate that there are no magical techniques that I can teach you. There are no nifty marker tricks and no easy three-step tutorials which will instantly make you the Michelangelo of the coloring world. You cannot hack your way into better coloring. But now that I've given you the official disclaimer, there is one thing that will make an instant difference in the realism of your coloring projects. It's not a hack. It's just something that you can start doing today which will improve the amount of depth and dimension in your projects. Stop printing with black ink. Now, I don't know what the world looks like from your front window, but where I live, stuff doesn't come with black lines around it. Stop this video, look around the room, look at your dog, look at your family. Does anyone have a black outline? Which is why this is killing your realism before you even start coloring. Now I know, there are all kinds of special tutorials on the internet about no line coloring, invisible stamping, or disappearing inks. But here's the thing, they're making it seem like that's something special or unusual, as if it's not what you're looking at every darn day. There are no outlines in real life, which is why you could be the best colorer in the world. You could have amazing talent, tons of skills. Heck, you could win the Nobel Prize for blending, and yet those big black lines will defeat it all. Don't believe me? Believe me now? Black lines kill your depth. They kill your dimension. They kill your sculpturing. They kill realism. Because black lines ruin the illusion of real life. Every time. Here's the thing. You've been coloring for a while, so you've likely developed a blindness to the black outlines. They're just a normal part of coloring. They're there, but you don't really think about them. You don't really see them, but we do. The people who look at your coloring projects, we see those black lines before we see anything else. Black outlines are pretty hard not to see. Black lines give away the game. They tell us that you're coloring a stamp, that you're filling in the blanks, that you're a crafter, not a creator. Black lines diminish the perceived value of what you do. No matter how many long hours you spend on the coloring process getting everything just right, fair or no, outlines immediately reduce your amazing and beautiful coloring into the realm of cute. And I know folks who like comic and animator styles of art they're going to protest this idea, but the truth is that no one ever looked at a Liechtenstein and marveled at its realism. 
If you want to go for that illustrated style, that's fine. Not all outlines are bad, but an artist chooses which outlines to show. They don't let some coloring book company determine where all the lines will be. If you're a colorer who really wants to work your way up to capturing accurate, lifelike realism, you have to ditch the black lines because outlines are simply not realistic. That's hard for many colorers because your outlines are a crutch. What most colorers don't realize until they try one of those no line coloring tutorials is that they're harder than they look and not for the reasons that you might assume. There's actually not a lot of difference in the coloring process. Same tools, same strokes. The hard part is that unbeknownst to you, the whole time you've been coloring from your very first stamp or coloring book until today, you have been letting the black outlines do all the hard work. You've been letting the black lines create visual boundaries. We know where the frog stops and where the background starts because the black lines tell us where that dividing line is. And it's not just the outermost outline. The black lines divide the frog's arm from his body. They tell us where his face stops and the eye starts. They keep all of his toes distinct and separate. They give him a nose. And on some frog stamps, the black lines even tell us where the spots are. When you don't have those black lines separating all the little body parts from each other, well, suddenly for the first time in your life, you have to do the separating. You're in control. You are responsible. And that means you have to think harder about what you're doing and the way you color it. Because if the frog's toes all melt together into a stumpy yellow mitten, that's your fault. In my Tree Frog online class, the lesson is all about edges. We're looking at how to print your images so that they work the same way that an artist's preparatory sketch works. This allows your stamp lines to recede, to become guidelines rather than part of the final artwork. Then we work through the coloring process, learning how to define and separate body parts. We're even covering things like how to separate a green frog from the green tree branch that he's sitting on. That's an important skill to have because objects in real life don't always separate themselves by color. But let's say that you don't have time in your life to take my class right now. What can you start doing today to reduce your dependency on black line boundaries? Well, this one is simple. Stop using black. Print in a lighter gray or choose images with finer lines instead of heavy outlines. For hand stamping, move to a gray stamp ink. Memento's London Fog is safe for Copic markers. It's dark enough for you to see the lines, but it's going to disappear underneath all but the lightest Copic markers. And colored pencils, they can hide it almost completely. Here's the other thing. Don't just stick to medium gray. Keep moving lighter and lighter on those gray inks until you've found one that totally disappears. And keep trying to choose stamps that have less and less detail. Build your confidence slowly, working towards that no line goal. And here's the most important thing to take away from today's video. Black lines don't just kill your realism. They prevent you from growing as an artist. It is so much easier to draw a mouth than it is to color realistic lips. It's much easier to let black lines separate all the leaves on a tree. But here's the thing. Clouds that are outlined will never look light and puffy and ethereal. They won't capture the spirit and the feeling of real clouds because real clouds don't have boundary lines. Dimension. That's a big word in the coloring community. Everyone wants more dimension to their projects. Dimension is making objects seem real and rounded, three-dimensional. Dimension is the illusion of life. 
You can't learn how to create dimension if you're using black line stamps as the boundary marks for everything that you color. If you let the outlines set the edges, you will never learn how to create realistic edges on your own. And you'll never capture the illusion of life because you're allowing the stamp lines to dominate the shapes within your artwork. Black line stamps are training wheels. They make coloring easier because they do a lot of the hard work for you. But there are so many colorers out there who can do more and be more than just someone who fills in the blanks. If that's you, and if you want to take your coloring beyond the coloring book look, you have to take the training wheels off. Edges. The ability to determine edges, to color the edges, to define the objects and boundaries within your artwork, that's the next step. And you can't get there if you print in black.